That means you do not have a WAP. What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Christina. If you're new here, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel, girl. It is free, sis. Okay. And then like this video because you clicked on it for a reason. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about the vagina, the coochie, the pussy, the punani, your cookies, your goodies, whatever you like to call it. <laughs> I would most certainly appreciate it if y'all gave me a pass for looking like this. I literally have washed my face three times today filming and all that. So let's just jump right into these uh questions okay so the first one says no questions but tell the people to let her breathe at night y'all this is essential growing up i was taught that when you go to bed you wear your nightgown and you put your underwear your drawers your panties on in the morning and the reason why is because the vagina is an organ that needs to breathe. That's right, y'all. It's not just a part of you. It is alive, okay? It needs to breathe. And wearing our pants and stuff during the day like we do can and will, you know, suffocate that area, especially if you wear stuff that's tight and is not made of cotton, okay? The second one says, is it good to use perfume products down there? The answer is no. No. Fragrances will throw off your pH balance and when your pH balance is thrown off you can have odors, you can have um, unusual or irregular discharge, it can mess up your periods. Just steer clear of perfumes around your vagina whether it's panties, sprays, baby powder, panty liners, pads, tampons, anything with any fragrance or essential oils does not need to be around your vagina. What daily products would you recommend? I'm not sure if I'm doing enough. Okay, so when it comes to daily products for your vagina, you really don't have to use anything down there or in there because your vagina will clean itself. Now, there are people who have special circumstances and those special circumstances mean that you need to go to a OBGYN, a gynecologist, not just a general practitioner, but someone who specializes in catering to the feminine organs, the reproductive organs. So daily products, I don't personally have any recommendations, but if you guys have some, please comment down below. I like to keep my vaginal health routine as simple as possible. I keep fragrances away. I usually wear underwear that are very breathable or made of cotton. I go commando all the time. I don't be wearing underwears, you know, because I don't need to. Um, and then when it comes to keeping it clean, I avoid soaps and washes and all of that because I don't have any pH issues. I just keep it clean with warm water, you know, in the shower and I use my hands, you know, for that. Other things you can do besides using products is keeping the area clean. Just keep it clean. A little bit of water, you know, in between the lips and all of that to get, you know, any unnecessary debris and stuff out of the way. If you have a bush, you know, you can use a little bit of soap on the face of your vagina to keep those hairs free from debris, free from what is naturally going to come out of your vagina, the normal discharge. If, you're, if you like to have a bush, just make sure that you keep it trimmed and cleaned and all that because that's really all that needs to be done. I think a lot of the time young ladies either grow up not being told or just really aren't aware that the vagina has an aroma to it. It has an aroma. It's going to smell like how it smells. If that aroma gets a little too strong or it starts to smell unusual to you, like your vagina should not smell like, you know, fresh crab or old fish, you know, or anything of that sort. If it becomes unusual, then you want to go see your gynecologist so that they can figure out what's wrong because they can run tests or do a pep smear and let you know if you have any um, sexually transmitted diseases, any infections that can occur, just from a number of different things that people like to do that aren't good for the vagina. How often for exfoliating? Ooh, okay, so if you have sensitive skin around your vagina or the face of your vagina, this is something you want to be very careful about. 
I definitely recommend using soft sponges, those squishy sponges that you get. I'll put a picture right here that you can get from the store instead of using a harsh exfoliant, especially if your skin is sensitive because you don't want to be causing problems down there. Personally, when I have less hair down there, I don't exfoliate as often because to me there's not really anything trapping dead skin cells or anything from coming you know to the surface and being rinsed away but when I do have the fuzzies I like to exfoliate with my little squishy sponge and I do it around my vagina I don't do it exactly on top or close to the opening of my vagina just the face and around the uh, outer part or around the inner part of my thighs and I do that probably two to three times a week because I like to exfoliate my whole entire body. And that's when I'll do that. You really don't have to exfoliate too much, again, unless you have uh, special circumstances. So if you are someone who happens to have a lot of buildup or someone who happens to have a lot of dead skin in that area, you may need to gently exfoliate. But something that's really important to keep in mind is to keep the skin moisturized. It doesn't need to be wet, okay? You don't need a 10-step skincare routine for your vagina. You just want to make sure that you are keeping that skin moisturized and avoiding using lotions or moisturizers closer to your lips. Like, don't put them around there, but just, you know, the face and all of that to keep it nice and cute, okay? The next question says, should I throw out panties that aren't seamless? I find that I get small, painful bumps sometimes. Keep in mind that any fabric that is not made out of cotton will not naturally allow your vagina to breathe. Seamless panties, I find, are usually not made out of fabrics that let your vagina breathe. And they're seamless because people like to wear clothes that are a little bit more fitted and they don't want their panty line showing. I completely understand. The only problem with that is, is because your vagina is not allowed to breathe, the discharge that your vagina produces throughout the day or is supposed to produce throughout the day is basically being allowed to stay moist instead of absorbing into your underwear and drying because cotton panties let your vagina breathe. They let air in so that your natural daily moisture, wetness, discharge, whatever you want to call it, can dry instead of staying wet. And because it stays wet like that, you can cause yourself to have yeast infections. Now the underwear that are not seamless, a lot of the time what happens is, is they're too tight. And I know we like for our panties to fit real well. We want them to, you know, lay on our skin, on our bootays, nice and smooth. You know, you wanna be cute. Whether it's for yourself or whoever, you know, I totally understand. And I used to have the same problem, but, when your underwear are fitted and tight like that, that's when you get that sensitivity because you're having friction. Your skin is rubbing up against those underwear, the seams and all of that, and it's causing irritation. Making sure that underwear fit but are not fitted. They need to fit properly, which means that they are not too loose, but they're also not tight enough to cause you discomfort. Will you feel like you got on granny panties? Yeah. Yeah, you will. But the good thing is, is you don't have to wear them all day. That's another thing. Take off your underwear. I, oh my God, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay, I don't think this is spoken about enough, but you have to take off your underwear. Just like you take off your bra when you get home, just like you take off your jeans, take off your underwear. Let your vagina breathe. Let it breathe. Let it breathe, okay? And if you want to wear seamless underwear, please just make sure that the part where your vagina will be sitting, the kitty cat part, is made out of a cotton fabric because nobody's going to see that through your clothes anyway. But just make sure so that you know you can wear them comfortably. I personally love seamless underwear, but I'm very adamant about taking off everything when I come home. <laughs> I don't like to be walking around in no clothes, period. Any tips for ingrown hairs and uneven skin tone? Now, if you are a brown-skinned woman, I just want y'all to know that it is absolutely normal and natural to have, um, not, it's not even discoloration, it's just a excess amount of melanin 
in those areas. And the reason why is because melanin is made to protect the skin and our vaginas and stuff do not get as much sunlight and everything else as the rest of our bodies do. So, and they're often being suffocated by fabrics because we wear pants and stuff like that. So there's a lot more melanin and skin down there. The skin is a little bit thicker as well. So it's gonna be a little bit darker. Personally, my, um, my bottom and my vagina area are a little bit darker um, at first glance, but when I'm out in the sun, it's not nearly as noticeable. It just, it kind of just goes back and forth. As far as I know, celebrities and people who are completely even down there usually get treatments like uh, facials for their vaginas, which is totally reasonable. I totally approve that as long as you go to someone who is licensed and experienced they get facials and treatments for the faces of their vaginas and things like that. Getting your vagina waxed instead of shaving can help with ingrown hairs and keeping the skin smooth down there. But again, of course, you have to keep in mind you can't be wearing, you know, tight stuff because, you know, you don't want to start getting infections and things like that. Um, ingrown hairs, if you get them every time you shave, you need to try an alternative, which is laser hair removal, chemical hair removers like Nair, or trimming using clippers instead of shaving. That's what I personally do. I use clippers because number one, I don't mind hair down there. Number two, it can cut really, really low if I needed to. And number three, I don't have ingrown hairs. I don't have razor bumps or anything like that since I made the transition to using clippers. And when I say clippers, I don't mean those cute little things that they like to sell women. I'm talking about the ones that barbers use, the ones that cost $50 at Walmart, the ones that will last you way longer than a razor as long as you keep them clean and neat like you're supposed to. If you've tried it all and you still happen to get ingrown hairs, just keep in mind that wearing fitted underwear and tight pants or tight clothes can cause the hairs that are growing back or brand new hairs that are growing out of the follicle to basically not escape out of the hair follicle like they're supposed to and you get ingrown hairs. Uh -huh! The next question says, how do I get a wop? That's how you get a wop. <laughs> if you don't have any irregularities with your vagina, Drinking plenty of water will help you have a WAP. And here's how you know that you have a WAP. Number one, your vagina will produce a natural, normal discharge throughout the day. Meaning your underwear will be sticky, sis. They will, it will be sticky. Um, and that's where panty liners came from. That's why people wear panty liners because they have a WAP and they're, they don't like feeling the wetness in their panties. The panty liners also protect your more, your more difficult to clean delicates from, you know, being potentially ruined by your WAP if your WAP is a little too WAPy. But that's one of the ways that you know that you have a WAP is if you're producing a clear, sticky discharge throughout the day. It's not gonna be the same kind of discharge as when you're sexually active. When you're sexually active, that discharge becomes a lot more fluid it can be sticky, but it's a lot more fluid, um, and that's why it's described as wetness. But this is just stickier, okay, and it'll feel like your underwear are wet because it is sticky. That's how you know you have a WAP. Drinking plenty of water does that for me. Also, eating my vegetables, and I mean raw green vegetables, really, really helps maintain the pH balance of my vagina, and that is essential to having a WAP as well because the thing is, your vagina is a boss, okay? She is an entrepreneur. She does her own work, period pun intended, she does her own work. She cleans herself up, she makes herself function. She, she's she got it all down packed, okay? And so if you're contributing to any issues that she has, then she has to focus on fixing those issues or warning you about those issues rather than doing her job. And her job is to be whoppy, okay? And she can't be whoppy if you're contributing to those issues. So, if you find that when
when you take off your underwear at the end of the day, they are drier than the Sahara Desert. That means you do not have a WAP. Keep in mind that your diet affects your vagina. So if you're consuming sugars, no matter what kind of sugars they are, too many sugars, too much bread, too much liquor or alcohol or um, junk food, you know, if you're consuming too much of the fun stuff and not enough of the good stuff, then you're not going to be whoppy, especially if you don't drink water. Water does so many good things for our body, and the gag is we are 70% water, so you really should be drinking this if you want anything to function properly. But that's how you get a WAP. Also, no, yeah, that's how you get a WAP. <laughs> okay, so the next one says, I can't think of anything right now. That's okay. <laughs> uh, the next one says, best advice for a clean shave. Okay, so this is for my girls who can shave, the girls who are not sensitive, because I don't have anything for anybody that is sensitive, because I'm sensitive, so I, I don't. I don't, I, and I don't shave. So, what I recommend for clean shaves is to number one, you need to trim the hair first. This is why it's so important to have some clippers, y'all, okay? I hear you, girl. This is why it's so important to have some clippers, y'all, because when you have clippers, you can knock that bush all the way down, okay? And I mean, all the way down, okay? Trim the hair down first. That way, the hairs don't get caught in your razor blade and you don't have issues gliding over them to cut them off and getting a close shave, okay? So, once you have cleansed the skin, once you have exfoliated a little bit, the hair should be soft enough to be cut with a razor, all right? So brand new clean razor, and then you shave against the gray. And you just, you really wanna make sure you keep in mind that the skin should be taut Taut means that you're you're not trying to shave, bring a razor up against the inside of your thighs where it's squishy like this. This is what taut means. You want a smooth surface to shave on. So when it comes to your lips, around your lip area, you will have to lift your leg up to stretch the area, the skin between your your thigh, your inner thigh, and your lips to stretch that skin a little bit. And you might even have to hold your lip with your finger, you know to get a nice clean shave, okay? I can't show y'all what I mean, <laughs> but if you, I can't, but yeah, you wanna, you wanna get that, the skin, you know, smooth, smoothed out and taut as much as you can. Not too tight, but just, you know. And then you shouldn't have to apply a ton of pressure to shave the hair off. That's really important too. And don't go over the area more than twice it's because the blade, although it is cutting the hair at the hair follicle, it is also exfoliating your skin and you don't want to over exfoliate your skin with a razor, okay? How do you maintain your pH? What can you use to clean without messing it up? Okay, so the way that I maintain my pH is by staying hydrated and eating a lot of green vegetables. I know I mentioned this earlier and I know people probably gonna be like, she lying, no sis, it's that serious. One thing that I really try to do is I try not to binge on sugar and bread. If I really, if I'm craving something, I will give it to myself, I will let myself snack on it, I will give myself chocolate, I will give myself gummy worms, yada yada whoop de woo. But after I have it, I always make sure I drink a bunch of water. Okay, so that's how I maintain my pH. I use my diet to maintain my pH because otherwise I don't have pH issues. This may come as a surprise to some of y'all, but you don't need to use soap on your vagina. And that is because your vagina is a boss. She works for herself. She cleans herself, she maintains herself, period. <laughs> So once you start utilizing products that are meant to cleanse your vagina or douche your vagina, your vagina's pH is thrown off and it can be, I don't know if it can permanently be affected, but I know that the, the longer you do it, the harder it is to fix because your vagina will become, because your vagina will become reliant on those products. So the way that I clean my vagina is in the shower with warm water and my fingers, okay? 
I cleanse the outside with soap, like my the face of my vagina, you know, and my inner thighs. But when it comes to in between the opening, like around the opening in between the lips, I just war run warm water down there and I use my fingers to remove anything if I see it or feel it. Which normally is not the case because, like I said, I take off my underwear and I go commando and stuff like that all the time. So my vagina is not being forced to hold on to anything it's trying to get rid of. I definitely recommend going to your gynecologist before picking up any soap for your vagina though because you really don't want to mess it up. It works, it works for itself. And like I said, there are people who do have special circumstances. There are people who are naturally not as who naturally whose vaginas do not naturally lubricate on their own but there are people whose vaginas ph is not naturally balanced so for those instances you do need to go to the gynecologist you do need to speak to them and tell them what you're going through so that they can run tests and they can make recommendations for you based off of the information that you tell them which i hope is the truth okay um one thing I will do though is I will leave down below links to companies that I personally trust so that you guys can go take a look-see. When I say companies that I trust, some of them are companies that I use and some of them are companies that I know other people use and trust. And so they're going to be, you know, my, my recommendation in these instances when it comes to soaps and things like that for you guys to try out. And maybe you can let me know how they work for you. Okay, so this just says, oh, okay, so the last question says, do you get period headaches? Oh, it never fails, always a day before or sometimes after. I do get period headaches, or, um, well, I used to get period headaches. If y'all didn't know, there are allegedly 40 symptoms to having a menstrual cycle, and I've had them all. I've gone through every single last symptom, and usually it's during my period. So I do get headaches. The only thing that I can think of to avoid it is just paying attention to what you're consuming because a lot of the time, at least in my case, I find that I get headaches and stuff like that when I'm hungry. My body wants me to consume things to give myself energy for the blood that I'm going to be losing or I haven't had enough water. If, if you're not staying hydrated, you can get migraines and things like that. And when you're losing blood, especially if you're a heavy bleeder or you're anemic and you're, you have menstrual cycles, when you're losing blood, that's nutrients and stuff leaving your body. So you want to make sure that you stay hydrated so that your body can produce more blood cells and so that you, you know not passing out a headache. I personally don't know anything that can stop PMS symptoms. I have been on all different kinds of birth controls. I have been on, now I'm on a pill that's supposed to induce menopause for me and I still have a menstrual cycle. So <laughs> um, I don't know anything that could really stop a period because the truth is is our bodies want to function and no matter what we take or what we do they are going to do their it's going to do its very best to do what it's supposed to do naturally or what it's doing that is allegedly unnatural so you guys if you have any answers to these questions any solutions that you want to share please leave them down below especially if it was something that i did not mention because of my personal inexperience on the matter or just something that you think is a good idea or something that works for you please comment down below and let us know also feel free to leave me any additional questions for the next video because in the next video i'm going to be telling you guys what i like to do when i'm going through my period as someone who has endometriosis and um if you don't know what endometriosis is hold on let me scratch my eye if you don't know what endometriosis is Endometriosis is an autoimmune disease where the lining of your uterus, the inside of your uterus, the endometrial wall, or the endometrial lining gets outside of your uterus somehow, they don't know how yet, and it attaches itself to nearby organs. It can spread as far as your heart and your brain, which is crazy to me. And what happens is when you have your period, those endometrial cells activate on those organs causing a lot of pain and in some cases people will bleed 
So, it's excruciating to go through and there are a lot of people who have no idea that they have endometriosis because it takes 10 years to diagnose on average, mostly because it's only, di it's only diagnosable through surgery and also a lot of the time when women say that they're in pain, they're not taken seriously. So. We're going to be chit-chatting about that. I'm going to be answering coochie questions for you guys. I'm more than happy to. Um, I guess this will be a bit of a series, perhaps. But I've always been the kind of person who's been comfortable talking about the things that nobody really wants to say out loud. So leave your comments and questions down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and then you can check out the next video, you guys. And I look forward to hearing from y'all. Peace!